everybody. It's Allison here with the Rochester Museum and Science Center. Clearly I'm not inside at the museum today, but I was inspired by the our coming nature centers. What in the wild is that? Yesterday I noticed a beaver swimming by and today I went out exploring to see if I could find their lodge or the homes that they build. These beavers are one of the busiest animals we know. They are always working and one of the coolest engineers in the animal kingdom. Behind me you can see a beaver lodge just over here and today I wanted to read a story for you guys that is called Beaver Gets Lost. Once a family of red squirrels lived in a little wood of sturdy oaks beside a bubbling stream. As the young squirrels played on a hollow log one crisp fall afternoon, a little animal with dark brown fur waddled up. I think I'm lost, he said. Don't worry, said Mother Squirrel. We'll take care of you. Hooray, cried all the little squirrels. We've got a new brother. My name is Josie, said one little squirrel, scrambling down the tree trunk. What's yours? Clarence, answered the little animal shyly. At first, the squirrel family thought Clarence was a squirrel too. Only Father Squirrel was puzzled about Clarence's tail. It was flat and covered with black scales, not fluffy and red like the others in the family. But it didn't matter. He and the rest of the squirrel family soon came to love Clarence as one of their own. One day, father and mother squirrel tried to teach their children how to build a nest. But the young squirrels wouldn't sit still for the lesson. They chased each other up trees and tossed acorns from the branches. Only Clarence paid attention. He listened carefully to every word father squirrel said. I can't wait to build my own nest, said Clarence. He got right to work dragging long branches across the forest to the clearing. As he worked, Clarence's nest started to look very different from the one Father Squirrel had built. Instead of layering small leaves and twigs in a pile, Clarence stood big sticks upright, leaning one against the other, and used his tail to pat mud into the cracks. Back and forth he went, dragging bigger and bigger branches past his astonished family. For days, Clarence kept at his work. Josie sat up on the branch and watched him. She wished he would play with her instead. When will you be done, she asked. Clarence looked at his nest. Not for a long time, he answered. There's still a lot of work to do. The animals in the forest gathered to watch Clarence. What's he doing, one squirrel asked Josie. He's been building that thing for days, said the weasel. Josie shook her head. He never stops, she said. He just keeps working. Clarence's nest got bigger and bigger. Still, he kept building. Do you want me to help you, Josie asked, hoping he'd be done soon. Oh yes, said Clarence. Would you please help me find more branches to use while I cut down this tree? Okay, sighed Josie, scampering into the woods. That was how Josie found a whole family of animals just like Clarence. They had big front teeth and broad flat tails and they were building a huge nest of sticks. Just like Clarence, Josie cried. Wait until I tell everybody. Josie was out of breath when she finally reached the family oak tree in the forest. Clarence, Clarence, she cried. I think I found your family down at the river. They're making a nest just like yours. Where, Josie, cried Clarence. Please show me. May we come too, the young squirrels begged their parents. Why not, said Mother Squirrel. Everyone rushed after Josie and Clarence, who were headed for the riverbank. Clarence and his mother and father were so happy to see each other again. How can we ever thank you for taking such good care of our little beaver? Asked his mother. Beaver, laughed Mother Squirrel. Why, we thought he was a squirrel. But it didn't matter. Just promise to let Clarence visit us in the woods from time to time. Our family has grown quite fond of him. So from that time to this, the squirrel family and the beaver family feasted together every week on apples, mushrooms, and acorns, sometimes by the beaver's lodge in the river, and sometimes by the squirrel's nest in the woods. The end. I saw a beaver swim by yesterday and wanted to learn a little bit more about them. 
beavers are one of the largest rodents in the world and they are a really, really cool animal that have so many interesting adaptations that helps them survive and thrive in their habitats. They are semi-aquatic, so that means they spend a lot of their time in the water and on land. As we learn in our story today, our friend Clarence has a lot of adaptations that make him well suited to this environment. Beavers, as you know, like to stay busy. Just like Clarence did, he kept building his house and building his house. The tools that he has as part of his body that help him do that, his really sharp front teeth, right? Those help him cut down the trees to build into his lodges and their teeth actually keep growing throughout their life, but all of the chewing they do keeps them filed down. Clarence and all other beavers have re really thick fur. It's oily by nature and it repels water, which keeps them warm throughout all of the seasons. They have a really flat tail. You remember Clarence patting the mud into his, into his lodge. They also use their tail to signal danger. So they'll slap it on top of the water to tell other beavers that there's a predator or something threatening, threatening their home. Here behind me, there is a beaver lodge. So as you can see, this is a smaller lodge here, but what they'll do is they'll kind of weave those branches and sticks together. Beavers are really like the engineers of the animal kingdom. So they work nonstop to build these lodges. So they'll live in their lodge with their family. You can see this smaller one behind me here. And there's another larger lodge right down there. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the video there or not, um, but beavers have adapted to become really great swimmers too. They have webbed feet, almost like a duck. They have that webbing, which helps them be really good swimmers. Their tail, their really large and powerful tail, acts as a rudder to help them move gracefully through the water as well. Um, Another really cool fact about beavers is that when they swim and they're carrying a stick or a branch in their mouth, their lips actually close behind their teeth so they can swim without water coming into their mouths. Also, they have a really, really cool adaptation that's almost like a third eyelid. It's transparent that closes so they can see when they're swimming underwater. Thanks so much for reading the story with me today and taking the time to learn a little bit more about a really cool engineer in the animal kingdom, beavers.